to Health with Samantha. I'm Samantha and today I'm in the kitchen. I just want to show you an easy way to incorporate ginger into everyday life. This is what I do myself to make my ginger tea. It's a great way to boost the immune system. Um, it's antiviral, antibacterial. It helps with coughs, all sorts of things. And I was just going to show you what way I like to do it. Um, all you need is your ginger. Make sure that you have it washed. I leave the peel on. It's just plain ginger root that you'll buy in any shop. Um, I'm going to sift the ginger fibres out, so I just leave the peel on for handiness. So what you need else is your chopping board and knife. You have a pot for cooking. I use the hand blender. It's my favourite tool in the house and I use it every single day. And then some kind of colander or filter and I like a nice pouring jug, just makes it handy to put it in the bottle for safekeeping and you can keep this in the fridge for yeah, a week at least. So let's get started. First we just chop the ginger for the big pieces. I'm going to blend them anyway. Now if you don't want to use the blender, all you have to do is um, chop them really fine. water to help with the blending process. If you have them chopped up to the tiny, tiny fine cubes, you don't need to blend them. You just pop that straight on the stove um, once you've filled up the pot with water. I'm going to get blended. the ginger and once it's boiling turn it down to a simmer and let it simmer for 15 minutes. So I would love to share with you all the amazing properties that ginger has while we're waiting for this ginger to boil on the hob and just to let you know studies are varied there are studies that say that these effects exist there are studies that say that they don't so it's very dependent on how the study was done who was in the study but it's interesting to know what effects have been found and these could be very um, dependent on how our own makeup is, whether ginger has a good effect or not, maybe dependent on our genetic makeup, on what the cause of our symptoms is. So just to be aware that not all these effects work for everybody and always listen to your body and be aware. Ginger has so many amazing properties. Um, it has been used as fragrances and soap in cosmetics and traditionally it's been used for malaria, snake bites, toothache as a painkiller, anti-inflatulant, anti-acid and diuretic. It does have diuretic properties so when you're drinking your ginger, remember don't drink it last thing at night before you go to bed so that you get a good night's sleep as well. Just a fun fact, ginger can be used for deworming sheep. Who knew? So farmers have used ginger in sheep and have noticed a reduction in worms in their sheep. Ginger has antifungal properties. So they showed that even where antifungal drugs were used and the fungus was resistant to the drugs, which meant that the drugs weren't working, ginger stepped up and actually killed those fungi. Go ginger. And also is antibacterial and it's shown to have antibacterial properties against a lot of bacteria that cause gastrointestinal symptoms such as Helicobacter pylori. So ginger really is a good one for the gut. It does seem to soothe the gut, it does seem to get the gut in um, a good place when it comes to microbes. Ginger also has a respiratory effect. It's been used for upper respiratory tract infections, bronchitis, coughs and respiratory distress. It has not been seen to be effective for COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So next time you have a cold or a viral infection, try taking a bit of ginger throughout the day and spruce it up with a little bit of lemon or honey or both 
and enjoy your sips of ginger, get your immune system going, reduce inflammation, kill those bugs and get yourself healthy quicker. Ginger also seems to have immunomodulating effects, meaning it actually regulates the immune system. So ginger has been seen in some clinical research to affect multiple gene expression. So this either helps boost the immune system or reduce the autoimmune response and it helps with proper development and involvement of the autoimmune process, meaning that this can reduce symptoms in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Another system that ginger seems to affect is the sex hormones. So ginger has actually been shown to increase testosterone. So those of you exercising, maybe a bit of ginger will help with your exercising, boosting your hormones and helping you get a good workout. There are some things to note about ginger. Just be careful if you're pregnant, um, be careful with children and also if you're lactating or breastfeeding because uh, ginger in high doses may have some adverse effects. Ginger in food has been shown to be fine, so just eat away, add it to your meals, um, but be careful when you're drinking the strong drink, this will be more of a concentrated form. One thing with ginger to be careful about as well is an anti-platelet effect. Platelets help our blood to clot, so ginger actually reduces the clotting in the blood. So if you're on medications, say like warfarin or pixaban, where you're actually reducing the clotting factors in your blood already and have high risk for bleeding, you need to use ginger with caution and maybe inform your doctor if you're gonna use more concentrated forms. But there's good news as well. The anti-clotting effect seems to be reduced when you take ginger with a meal that includes fats. So eat your healthy fats and ginger helps reduce cholesterol as well. So we've got like a three in one. It's brilliant. So the last step is just to decant your ginger and get it into your bottles. proceed to dilute this with hot water, sparkling water, cold water, lemon, honey, whatever you prefer. Um, enjoy your ginger, stay healthy. Let me know in the comments if you um, have used ginger, how you use it, if you make it a different way, any tips you have for me, and if you feel ginger's worked for you, how did it work? All the best guys, have a great day.